Here at ATES 2015 in Denver, I'm Thomas Baldrick with Dr. Arya Fisher. He is the Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Rheumatology at National Jewish Health and the University of Colorado. Thank you, sir, for your time. We value it. All right, so you presented posters on, on the use of a pair of therapies, perfendone and rituximab in patients with CTD associated ILD. Please fill us in on what you've done with these studies. Sure. We'll, we'll take the first one, perfenidone. Uh, this was a industry-sponsored study by the manufacturers of perfenidone, Intramune and then now Genentech Roche. Uh, I was on the steering committee of the trial and it's the LOTUS study. Uh, and I was able to present that. The first author was not able to join us for the meeting. but. Uh, on behalf of the steering committee, what we tried to do and what Genentech and the company was looking to do was an open label study, a phase two open label study in scleroderma interstitial lung disease. Profenadone has been approved by the FDA for the treatment of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and interstitial lung disease. And the thought was, well, scleroderma patients have a lot of interstitial lung disease, not great therapies in that space. Can we extend from the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis world to scleroderma interstitial lung disease? The other real consideration is that the known toxicities of perfenidone typically are gastrointestinal and dermatologic, photosensitive eruptions, nausea, other gastrointestinal symptoms. And those are symptoms that actually a lot of the scleroderma patients sort of struggle with already. And so the thought was, can we use a medication with those toxicities potential side effects in a group of patients that have those problems. And so this is a phase two study, 63 patients from around the world, 18 centers, United States, Canada, and Italy, uh, enrolled for a four month treatment course. And what we know from the study is that those patients who were on perfenidone, the, all patients were on perfenidone, but those patients enrolled in the study seemed to tolerate the drug well. They tolerated it in a similar capacity as those with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So one highlight, this drug appears to be safe and tolerated in a scleroderma interstitial lung disease patient, a very important finding. The other finding is that two-thirds of the patients were on background immunosuppression. They were on mycophenolate mofetil, either for their scleroderma skin or other musculoskeletal abnormalities that needed immunosuppressive therapy or for their interstitial lung disease. And so what we know is that those patients who were in the trial on profenadone also two-thirds were on background mycophenolate and similarly tolerated the drug well. This was not an efficacy study. It was not designed to look at efficacy. There were some exploratory endpoints, but candidly, this was not an efficacy trial. So we have no idea whether the drug works in scleroderma interstitial lung disease. What we can say is that it was well tolerated, similar to that in IPF, and can be used safely with mycophenolate mofetil. So now that you know the toxicity aspect, do you go back and do the efficacy? So that will be up to the, study, the, the, the manufacturers, the company for sure, but I, my sense is that there is enthusiasm to move ahead, considering the results of Lotus, to now look at whether this drug is efficacious, larger study, more centers, more patients, different outcome measures, longer duration. In your opinion, are these drugs viable options for patients with CTD ILD? So, perfenidone is not. Perfenidone at this point is restricted to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. And that's the only place that it has been approved, and so patients with scleroderma or other connective tissue disease ILD should not be treated with perfenidone until we have data to help guide us in that regard. The other drug you asked me about, Tom, was rituximab. And that's the other study that we did. And rituximab is a, an approved therapy for rheumatoid arthritis. It's approved for lymphoma and approved for vasculitis. There have been a few case reports, small series, that have suggested that rituximab can be used as either rescue therapy for connective tissue disease ILD, maybe for rheumatoid ILD. There have been some small case series about that, or myositis ILD. What we wanted to look at was at our center, an outpatient treatment center for CTD ILD, the use of rituximab, and we looked at 24 patients, so small series from a single center, retrospective data. What we saw was sort of a mixed response. As a group, no real change. As a group, patients going into rituximab, going out of rituximab, their lung function was the same. But we did see some responders. We saw some non-responders. I think all we could say at this point is that it's a potentially promising agent in select patients with CTD ILD. Whether or not we can narrow beyond that, I don't think, we, I don't think just yet. Uh, I think we need to study this more. 
Rheumatoid is a compelling story for rituximab because it does work for the joints. Uh, myositis is another area and maybe rescue therapy. So what would you do next then? Well, I think we need to get more organized and be able to have larger centers, more sites, more patients, prospective data. I think retrospective data has just inherent limitations. 24 is a good start. We'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Tom.